Hi everyone, it's Vacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again today. A while ago I made a video on Behringer's Xenix Q502 mixer demonstrating how to get zero latency using a special link. So when you are doing multi-track recording, you are able to hear yourself uh, playing or vocal singing and record each track independently without any latency. Now latency, as we know, it's a, a delay between when the audio from your microphone gets to the mixer, into your computer, and then back again, that process creates a delay. So my video demonstrate that how to overcome that delay and hear yourself straight away without any delay, which can be confusing sometimes. And if you want to watch that video, you can click right here and you can go and watch that video. It's very interesting. It's been very popular as well. Over time, a lot of people have asked me if it's possible to have effects like reverb and echo onto the vocals while recording the vocal track um, to give a bit of ambience to the vocalist. Um, and as we know, the, the Q802, 502, uh, 1002 and so on, these mixers, um, which are USB mixers, um, they don't actually have built-in effects unit. So in this video I'm going to demonstrate to you how to achieve a reverb or echo or any effect that you want from your DAW into the vocalist or while recording. At the same time recording the vocal flat. So no effects will be recorded onto the vocal track. So later on you can change the effects uh, however you like but while recording you'll be able to hear a reverb or echo as you're doing your vocals. In this video I'm going to demonstrate this um, procedure using Personas Studio One version T3 Prime, the free DAW, but once you grasp the principle of how it works you can use any, pretty much any DAW to apply the same procedure. So without any further ado let's get on to uh, my desk and I'll show you how I have my Q502 connected like before and then I'll go onto the screen to demonstrate in Personas Studio One version 3 Prime. Here is my Q502. I have the microphone connected in a set of headphones and a special link for the zero latency is there as well. As, uh, as I mentioned, if you haven't watched my zero latency trick video and how that works, um, you can click on right here, visit there, and once you know how that works, you can come back and continue from there. I'm just using uh, just a headphone, the Sennheiser uh, HD201, just the basic headphones to listen to, and the USB is again connected to my laptop. To demonstrate, I have my Studio One version 3 prime running. I've added a couple of tracks as my backing tracks. Let's have a quick listen. So that's our backing track that we're going to assume that's our song that we want to sing on to. So what you're hearing right now is the output of the headphone from the Behringer Xenix Q502 mixer that I have connected. So what's in my headphone is what you're exactly hearing. And that's because I want to demonstrate the effects and why we are using this technique. Because you might think that sure you can just add a track, add a VSD plugin for uh, reverb and turn it on and you should be able to hear the reverb. Yes and no. So to demonstrate what I mean, I'm just going to add a track, call it Vox for vocal. I'm using the left channel input because we only have left and right input. It does not matter. In this case, just click OK. So that's our vocal track. Now if we actually click to monitor the input, so that means we are going to hear the output of the audio interface sent back to our headphones. And now we have this echoey, phasey effect. That's only because we're hearing our original sound from the mixer onto our headphones due to our, um, the latency trick 
that I have uh, demonstrated previously. And at the same time, we are hearing what's coming back from Studio One, our DAW. And that processing has this um, delay effect. Because it's, and this will make, make it really hard for us to actually, um, uh, even if we add effects, it'll make it really hard to, it's making me hard to actually talk now rather than even imagine if I'm singing to this voice. So we need to make sure that we don't have that phasing effect. To overcome this, what I need to do is add another track. This time I'm going to call it um, Vox FX. Again, I'm going to use the same input, the left input, click OK. So this time I'm going to arm the original one because that's the track I want to record. And for this track, I want to listen to it. So now I have the same audio signal. My microphone is going into two tracks, as you can see here. Both of them are coming up at the same time. Now, what I need to do next is add my effects channel. Add effects channel. And then my effects channel, let's uh, say I want to add a mix verb. Uh, let's assume I'm just going to, to get a good uh, effect for it so you can actually hear the, the thing. I'm just going to use large hole. And then I'm not going to use my original track to send to the channel, but I'm going to use my Vox FX track to send effects. Now, if I turn the monitoring on, you should be able to hear um, mix verb. But still, if I turn the effects off, you still have this phasing issue. Okay, so we want to get rid of phasing issue. So the next thing to do is turn this off. If we turn that off, we don't have the phasing issue, but we don't have the effects. Not if we enable pre-fader. Once we click pre-fader, now regardless of the fader position, we actually have the audio going to our effects channel. You probably think, why would you go all that route? The whole idea is, to make a double track is to get this phasing issue. See, that's that's really phasing issue out of the question. And record flat as well. So now that we've got our reverb in the background and we can hear ourselves clearly, we should be able to record our vocals. And of course, our vocals will be recorded flat without any effects. And later on, we can certainly either select the same effect or a different effect for our recorded or, uh, vocal track. So let's uh, give it a try and see how it goes. I feel quite comfortable this level to have a listen to myself singing with some vocals, uh, with some rhythm in the background for my vocals. We've got the track armed. Let's um, give it a try. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Okay, so I was happy with that. I can adjust my thing. So let's have a quick listen to what I sang. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Okay, so it's recorded flat. Now, if we're happy with uh, our... Um, effects, then we can certainly send it to this effect. We should be able to have... Yeah, it. yeah, yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! So I hope that explains it. Um, we could hear our background track and uh, we could hear our vocals clearly with some reverb in the background and we could even adjust that. And Rick recorded it um, a flat uh, signal onto our vocal track so that later on we could add and change any of the effects that, um, that we like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Okay. Well, I hope this procedure works. What? A little bit. Take three. Well, I hope this procedure was helpful for you. Now you know how you can actually track the vocals, give the singer some reverb or echo into their headphones while they're recording the track and have still have flat recording of the vocal tracks on your DAW. And if you have any comments, uh, anything further need to be um, clarified, please comment below. I'm more than happy to answer them for you. And of course, don't forget to give me the thumbs up. Um, and also, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel that way. Um, so that you be kept up to date with any new video that I upload into my YouTube channel. And also, of course, you can always visit my website, recordingstudio9.com. There's a whole heap of more information there as well, which is not on YouTube. So I hope I see you there again. And until next time, as always, thanks for watching. Cheerio. Bye.